Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Red and White Show. Joining me for this one and looking ahead to this Friday's game against Walsall in Skybet League 2, Rovers defender James Maxwell and Club Doncaster media manager Liam Hoden. James, welcome to the show. It's been a couple of weeks now between games for Rovers. How have you found that little break in, in intensity, if you like? Uh, yeah, obviously not nice to have you know a kind of extended period off the off the back of the loss. Um, but I think we've shown already um, after the, the Stevenage game we're quite good at putting that loss behind us and we kind of went through the same process as we always do um, in terms of reviewing the game and kind of uh, dissecting it. So it wasn't dwelt on too long. Um, you know, we worked hard that week and then had a, had a bit of time at home uh, to recover and this week's just been fully focusing on Walsall. Of course you're a long way from home. Did you get a, a rare opportunity to go back up and, and see the family or anything like uh, that? Yeah, first time I've been up um, since I've been down here so yeah, it was nice to go home and uh, uh, see the family and see a few friends while I was up. In terms of the games, you know, you, you lose at Colchester after such a, a good performance against Grimsby. Would you have preferred a game almost straight away? It's the old adage, isn't it? You, you want to get back out there as soon as possible. Yeah, definitely. I think going into the breaks, you don't you don't want to have probably a two week break in between. Um, but there's nothing we can do about it. Um, yeah, obviously we'd have rather a game, but uh, the, the fixture schedule is what it is. Um, and we've had two weeks, two good weeks to prepare for Walsall. Liam, how do you think Danny Schofield will have used those two weeks? Because it was clear that in games such as Grimsby and, and Stevenage a little bit earlier on that his ideas were getting across, little bumps in the road, which everyone would have expected. But these two weeks, I'm sure for him, would have been priceless in, in you know fine-tuning little bits and bobs. It's, it's, we're still in the phase where he's, he's instilling that, that idea, that, that style of play and, and, the, and his methods on the group. Early on in, the, in his tenure, he'd got games in quick succession, so there weren't a great deal of sort of breathing room within that and it, this last fortnight has really been about sort of maximising the time as much as possible that you've got and being able to, to work on, on individual stuff stuff as, as, as units across the team and, and stuff as a collective as well so it'll have been used to I'm sure Danny uh, as well as James will have been hope, wishing there were a game in between but it'll have been used to its maximum that time and you know hopefully we're always kicking on a little bit more uh, after, after this little break how much do you have to take advantage, James, of, of these periods when you don't have a game for a certain while? It's almost like a mini pre-season, isn't it, to then get ready for, for the Christmas schedules. And when you've got a new manager or head coach in, there are always going to be little bits you can learn and little areas you can improve on. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the main things that I've realised when I've come down here is the, the lack of uh, preparation time between games. You know, it can be quite... Uh, you know, the Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday schedule is not something I'm used to, so it can be quite physically demanding. And it is nice to get a rest. And as you say, it's it's been good with us obviously having a new manager and that we've, we've not really had too much time to to spend on the training pitch. Um, and we've had a really good two-week block uh, in terms of being able to work on, on his ideas and, you know, put, putting in the, the right foundations um, and, and sort of add into that. How have you found your role within the system? It's certainly an attacking, wasn't it? Isn't it? You're given a license to to get forward while also using your defensive qualities as well. But you, you seem to be enjoying your football a lot at the minute. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, if I could probably pick a position, that would that would be it. Um, obviously, the way I've been I've been playing, I think, has been pretty consistently well, um, and I, I do really enjoy the role because it, it it gets me a bit higher up the pitch. But I, I still do enjoy defending. I still enjoy blocking crosses. And doing that part, um, and I also really enjoy, you know, kind of learning because it's not something that I've played a lot in as a as a, the left of the, kind of the five or higher up in three. Um, it's not something I've done a lot up in Scotland or worked tactically on. So it's it's been good, you know, kind of just being a sponge with the gaffer and taking in that kind of tactical direction. You can see Liam as well, can't you? In, in weeks gone by, that this is a group willing to learn and players like James taking on new responsibilities but also knowing exactly why they're doing it as well which is what Danny's spoken a lot about having a purpose behind everything they do that's massive it's it's kind of the, the understanding of, of what you're doing and Danny's spoken about that and in terms of providing that that knowledge and you know that provides so much assurance to players gives them that confidence they know what they're doing they know where they should be more importantly they know where else the teammates are going to be whether that's backing covering or being able to support in a, in attacks that's massive for players and that's that's a big thing that Dan has been developing over the last few weeks time for the latest quick fire round now then the man alongside us was in the hot seat this time uh, James Maxwell 20 years old uh, born and crew, uh, raised in Ayr, probably, uh, most likely. I had a few places when I was younger. 
Uh, Southside Boys Club. Uh, it was a boys club in there. Um, and yeah, that's where uh, I first started out. Uh, Man United. Um, Ronaldo when I was dead young, then towards the end probably Bale. Uh, one that plays my position preferably. I, as I said, it was probably Bale because of how like quick and powerful and that he was, and uh, he was kind of playing up the left hand side, which was when I was playing when I was younger. Uh, so probably him, probably even still now. Jesus, not scored many. Uh, what, professionally or when I was younger? Any. Probably when I was like six, when I used to be able to just take the ball past everyone. I scored one when I was dead young, where I'd just take and get the ball off the goal and drive through everyone, but as I said, seven years old, so. Best mate in football. Uh, I've got a couple from Rangers. Um, Lewis Bodanowskis, Kai Kennedy, who are still at Rangers, um, so probably them. Oh, um, just a casual one, probably Nando's. Um, outside of that, I don't know. It was probably like a Milan cart or something, like a nice steakhouse if I was going out for a proper meal. Cheap meal, go to probably McDonald's, can't lie. D disgusting, but it was good. Uh, Used to be heights when I was younger, kind of got over that, so I probably got a snake last night. Oh, John, lad, there ain't many. Um, there ain't any. None. None. Um, couple. Probably UFC, but I don't know if you'd count that as kind of like a, a sport. Uh, apart from that, golf. I love, love golf. What was the last one I watched? Watched a couple on the BBC, like the capture and stuff, that was good, but favourite of all time, Prison Break, season one, wow. Uh, Drake's new album, favourite artist by far. I'd, honestly, I don't watch that many movies, so actors and that are like, gone to me. I'd, nobody could, who's Scottish, who's a Scottish actor? Exactly, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Um, you have a inside man, like the old one where it was like the the bank right, the bank robbery. That yeah, was good. Good for me with that. Uh, Ibiza with the with the boys in the summer. Very good. Uh, tennis. I used to play tennis when I grew up. Love tennis. Anything other than football or sport, like sport was just like an obsession. When I was dead young, before even, I didn't kick a football before I was like five, partly used to be obsessed with like Power Rangers and stuff like that, like stuff like that I used to be obsessed with, but out with sport, and when I was younger they went a lot. Uh, uh, what would the support be? Probably to fly, you can just go home easy. <laughs> It wouldn't take me long. I'm trying to think, let's have a look. What do I think, what do I think I need? Uh, you know, I'd take Clates' like long, ra long range passing. I would take that from him. James, you said there that Gareth Bale is a man you, you look up to and, and admire as a, a professional footballer. Just exactly what is it about him? Expand on that a little bit in terms of what he does as a player and, and how you can sort of learn from him. Um, I think probably when I when I first enjoyed watching was when he first broke through kind of Spurs, um, and it was he was up and down the left hand side, which was like similar to what I was doing when I was like 11, 12. You know, kind of I was playing in midfield uh, on the left side, so it was kind of natural in terms of seeing like a, a left sided player going at players and dribbling. And you know, obviously when you're younger, you just look at the goals and like some of the goals you scored at the time were mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, and then over the over the time, you know, when you're growing up, you see him producing big moments and and kind of Champions League finals, and uh, also like putting you know his national team in his back. So I think all that kind of just played into one, and um, there wasn't really any like specific things that he done. You know, it was just in terms of his whole package was was something I really enjoyed watching. He seems like he was a player anyway. I know he's obviously adopted his game a little bit as he, as as he's got older, but 
he played with no fear, didn't he? You mentioned when he was at Spurs and the way he was run down the wing and, and similar to, to the role you're being given now, playing with no fear can make a big difference to players. Yeah, I think it's probably the biggest part of being you know, a professional and everyone here you know, at this level, most of them is technically good, you know, can, can do the basics well. Um, and it's more controlling your kind of mentality and where your mind is because that's probably the biggest factor in terms of our performances. Mm. Um, and, it, you know, that's, once you find that kind of level and how to get yourself into the right mental state for games, it's, it's a big part of your performances. It's something players talk about a lot, Liam, isn't it? Having that ability to, to shake that fear because it can be almost a, an extra opponent, can't it? If, if in your head you haven't quite got that belief that you can go out there and perform to the best of your ability, nine times out of ten you won't. That's it, and you've got so much responsibility. Whatever position you're in on the pitch, and particularly in the modern game where your defenders are unit as well, there's so much on you and so much that you've got to produce and so much you've got to think about. If you've got that fear, that doubt in your mind, you can easily get lost out there. I was speaking to Kyle Knoll this week for, for the programme and he was talking about his form and, and why confidence has been a massive factor in that. It's, it's such a big part of the game. Now, Oli Junger and Luke Molyneux have been busy off the pitch recently working with the NCS Changemakers, preparing shoeboxes for those less fortunate this Christmas. Liam, another example of the, the players being out in the community, working hard on and off the pitch. And, and it's something, of course, a lot of work goes on behind the scenes, doesn't it, to make sure those type of things can happen? Yeah, and it's particularly so at this time of the year, you know, you, you, your thoughts turn to others much more at Christmas, it seems. And times are hard at the minute, you know, cost of living crisis and all things like that. So the lads helping out in that in any way that they can is, is absolutely massive. And putting smiles on people's faces as you said there this year more than ever it seems people are struggling to, to pay for certain presents and it could be a help to a lot of families can't it to, to have that sort of assistance every little bit helps you know what, whatever we can do as a club it, it, it's massive however big or small it, it is it, it does make a massive difference and as as a you know, an organisation at the centre of the community as we pride ourselves on being and anything we can do we will certainly try to do it James, as a group of players, you, you've got to be able to or be willing to take that on board as well, haven't you? It's not just about what you do on the pitch and, or at the training ground Monday to Friday. There's many different aspects to, to being a professional footballer and this is one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously, we want to put on performances that put people, uh, smiles on people's faces um, and we need to be willing to do that and also the bit off the pitch, you know, nobody's immune to it. Um, you know, you, we want the fans to come here enjoying the football and also going home and, and everyone, everyone knows what's going on with the cost of living, etc. Um, so any way we can help as players uh, off the pitch, uh, we'd be willing to do. And we've said a few times, it's about building those relationships with fans and I know you've been out to local businesses and, and things like that. And I suppose it helps you if, if fans are watching you and feel like they know you, they're probably less likely to give you a bit of stick if, if something goes 100%, 100%, wrong. 100%, um, 100%. You know, we we need to help build that connection with the fans, which is um, which has probably not been 100% this season. Um, and if they can relate to us as as you know human beings as well as footballers, um, I think that goes a long way in terms of not just avoiding criticism, but you know building like the one club, you know, and making sure that everyone feels involved. And after 13 games out, Tommy Rowe will make a welcome return to the Rovers squad on Friday night. The club captain says he can't wait to be back out on the pitch. 
Tommy, it finally seems that the light at the end of the tunnel is here. You've, uh, you've been training regularly over the last few weeks. How does it feel in, in the position that you're in now? Yeah, it's been good. Um, it's been a sort of struggle for two months now since sort of mid-September. Um, and obviously, I was struggling a little bit before that, um, sort of trying to get through games as much as I could. Uh, it's always part of the sort of DNA of footballers is just to sort of keep going until your body can't go any further. But um, when it became apparent that I couldn't sort of really contribute anymore and we uh, we had to take a step back and it's been frustrating because I probably had two or three little setbacks on, on my way to recovery. Um, but no, I've been enjoying a full week's training and just to be around the lads and the intensity of training and the direction that it's been has been good for me um, so I've just got to keep up my fitness levels and you know push myself to uh, to be involved at some point you don't want those little setbacks but in the overall picture of, of your health and how long you, you can be able to sustain it for could they be a bit of a blessing in disguise yeah and I think they were they were happening to me because I was pushing myself to be ready immediately it's just you know me as a person I have to be involved you know I hate missing games I know everyone hates them but but when I'm coming back into training, I could have took it easy and I could have, you know, probably done less. But if I was going to be involved, I wanted to know that my body was going to be robust enough and not break down and um, probably pushed it in an area when the conditions weren't too great. And um, it was only a minor setback. It was nothing too worrying. But, uh, yeah, now it's uh, it's good to see that I've, I've come through that now. And um, I've been enjoying the training sessions and sort of learning alongside the lads um, sort of what Watching training's been been fun for me, and sort of writing notes and, and studying how how I'd take to it. And now I'm practically doing it, uh, just getting them fitness levels right. And uh, yeah, I've been enjoying it. I was sat alongside you while you were doing commentary the other week at, at Grimsby, and you were making notes throughout that one. Always kind of studying what what's going on. Yeah, I think it's important. It's not just something I've been doing since the manager came, and I've been doing it since my time at, at Doncaster. Um, just skills that. I've I've learnt from other people, other ex-players, and um, you know, if you can cultivate them types of skills as a footballer, and you understand the learning process that goes in, then obviously there's there's key benefits to you as a player, um, where you know you, you retain information better, and you can help other people, other players, your teammates in in key moments um, with with better detail that is required when you go into a match day. You are faced with separate emotions that you know come with different games, different demands, and it's important that you get the detail right because often that's where games are won and lost. So for me, it's just a simple technique, and, I, and it's fun. You know, I can I can sort of lose myself sometimes just watching football, but if I'm writing something down and diligent with it, then you know I can go somewhere with it. Detail seems to be one of the key words under the new head coach Danny Schofield. How have you found working under him so far? Really enjoyed it. Um, like I say, from the periphery, from my viewpoint, has been just to understand what the lads are going through in a training session and what demand that is. You know, you can see them working really hard and, and buying into things, and you know that's obviously been noticeable on match day, uh, where we've been performing really well. Um, and obviously, we've had a, a couple games where we fell off, and I said that sort of in the commentary where the moments will happen with this sort of new learning but we don't know when they will happen um, we go into each game with a with a mindset and an approach that is is ready to win and when the the learning changes within a game we adapt and sometimes we don't adapt quick enough and in football you get punished and we've had two games of that uh, so so now it's a case of just maintaining that consistency and and believing in what we do even more really being fearless in our approach and delivering as much as we can and I think we'll have longer spells of consistency we'll still have the odd drop in, in performance because you know we're human and footballers make mistakes so as long as we know as, as teammates that the manager and the and the coaching team wants us to make mistakes but the right mistakes um, by playing the right way then you know we'll continue to do so 
How, one of those drop-offs came in the last game, last time out against uh, Colchester. How has it been reacting to that as a group and, and assessing where things went wrong on the day? Well, no, the first thing that we always do is review every game um, collectively and individually. I think that's an important tool. Feedback is, is massive to footballers, um, to sports people in general, because after any event you go home, you take the emotions of that home and you can be clouded with your judgment, you can be harsh on yourself, others can be harsh on yourself if you're on social media. I'm not, so I'm my own biggest critic. And um, yeah, I think when we when we sit down in this room on a Monday, we've all watched it and we've all seen what we've done not so good, but we've also seen things that we've done really well and they can go um, behind the, the lens of, of some people. And it's important that we get that feedback and their message is a key for us the way we start the training session on Monday um, in the same direction just to put things right that we probably went got lost on a little bit and uh, just to keep working and constantly improving on them them details like, like you mentioned earlier but yeah it's it's an early it's the early stages of, uh, of the process so we're well aware that it's not going to be right all the time but we're also we have a sort of high regard for wanting to be good in every single performance and I think that comes from our respect from, from the fan base from, from me and myself who've been here for the best part of five years um, I, I know what they demand as well and you, you know it's when we're learning we've still got to be winning and I think you know that's that's the right balance it should be so putting that demand on ourselves to go out there and do the fundamentals you know win the game off the back of you know the first and second balls but also get our game plan and, and play to our strengths Fingers crossed you are involved on Friday night against Walsall I'm actually looking forward to, to being properly a part of a, of a Danny score for team based on what you've, you've put in on in training and, and what you've seen from the game so far yeah I think you know obviously this week's been a, a good good week for me to to push on really and um, to stake a claim in that that sort of way I want to be playing and um, right now I've just got to keep working hard on, on my recovery and um, put myself in position to, to play on the weekend or, or whatever it may be and uh, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a great game on, on Friday for us so it's the next one and uh, I'm looking forward to playing it James Rowey set to come back into the team. It seems a long, long time since he was in the starting eleven or even in the match day squad. How big a boost is it to have him and somebody of his calibre back involved? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, even when he's been back in training, you can see the sort of standards that he drives as a as a professional. It's something that, that hit me straight, right straight away coming in the club um, was how good a professional he was and how um, how on it he was every day. So, yeah, I think that's that can only be a boost even when he's not been in the squads. He's been in here in the changing room. Um, making sure people are on it. Um, so yeah, a massive boost for us, a big player for us. People lead in different ways, don't they? And he doesn't strike me as someone who's a, a ranter and a raver and has to raise his voice to get his point across. Would that be? Would you agree with that? The fact that he maybe leads by example rather than having to say certain things. Yeah, hundred percent. I think you know you have to look at him, the amount of energy and his body language and everything that he brings to our team. Um, he can, he has, you know, he can be loud um, if he need, if he thinks you need a a joke but um, yeah definitely I think you could just look at the, at the person and the, the energy that he exudes off his performances um, yeah definitely a, a big big person for us Liam he's a big game player isn't he and especially coming into the Christmas period as well when it really heats up a little bit and you start to play those three games in a week or, or different things like that and, and having him available for, for Danny which he's not had since he got appointed is going to be massive it is it's, it's been there and done that uh, in, uh, across the EFL really uh, and having someone and any ex adding that experience it's still, it is a young group we, we made no secret about that but having someone of his experience level and his undoubted quality is uh, massive for the team particularly going into a busy period and with the, the system that Danny's gone with in, in the first few weeks you could see him fitting in in probably four or five different areas can't you so having that versatility you know as, as we saw at Colchester with Luke Molyneux coming off he could have gone behind a striker he can fill in at left wing back if James needs a rest or, or anywhere like that so he can fill in, in in many different areas it's a massive asset to the squad for that reason as, 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 as everything else as well you know that versatility has been been incredible we've seen him playing at, at centre half which I don't think you'd imagined at one time but he looked very assured when he, when he filled in at that role last uh, season so you'd back him to do it again you know he, a, a quality player to call upon a, a fa fantastic figurehead for the club as well it's been impressive as well watching him while he's been out you know he sat alongside you and did commentary uh, at Grimsby and while they were doing that making notes on on the performance 
you know, he's, he's constantly uh, evaluating things and analysing things. And I think at that stage of your career, to show they've still got that hunger to learn, to pick things up, to notice the little details that will make a difference to, to his game and his part of the team as well, it's, it's absolutely massive. Walsall, the next te test then, James. A point and a place behind Rovers in the table. It's set up nicely, isn't it? Not a lot separated the two teams so far this season. Yeah, uh, I think it's kind of given off similar um, kind of vibes to the, the Grimsby game. Um, you know, they were pretty close in the table and it was, and it seemed like a big game. We had a bit of time preparing for it. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of a similar set up to that. We've had a look, a good look at how Walsall want to play. Um, we feel pretty confident in, in what we know on them. And um, yeah, obviously we have to implement, implement our style right, uh, right on them as we always want to do. Danny always wants to get the ball down and play and he wants his teams to be aggressive. I mean, the pitch at Colchester was inconsistent, probably to, to say the least, wasn't it? How much are you and the boys looking forward to being back here, back on home soil, a nice wide open pitch to be able to, to play expansive football? Yeah, I think that uh, suits us being here, um, even though results probably haven't shown that. You know, the, in terms of the quality of performance, I think our best performance of the season came against, against Steve Ridge, even though we lost in terms of how big we can make the pitch when it when it looks good when it when it feels right you know we want to be expansive we want to we want to make the game as big as possible and I think the pitch um, and the quality of it which is a credit to the ground staff is is um, is something that suits us. Liam, they've got Michael Flynn in charge, a man who's had a fair bit of success with Newport in this division and in the cup competitions as well on a, a probably a, he would admit a shoestring budget in South Wales. He's got the job at Walsall now and, and certainly a, a big appointment when they made it. I think plenty of eyes were maybe looking around at them as potential contenders this season. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, he, he kept them up last season in, in fairly difficult circumstances. They survived quite comfortably in the end. And a tough start to this season, but the way that they've kicked on in the last couple of months has been really impressive. And, and you would back them to be to be up there at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. His man management seems to be key, doesn't it? And I suppose it has to be with the job he had at Newport. You know, he didn't have millions to spend. You've got to really create something special, haven't you, to, to then get the best out of the group of players you're working with? You certainly have, and I think you see that him going in and, and making sure that they kind of got over the line last season and, and, and stayed in the division. I mean, relegation would have been unthinkable for, for Walsall based on where they've been in recent years. But yeah, he started that last season and slowly building upon it. It's, it's, it's a big part of his game and he's obviously, over the years, had some fantastic success with it. They've had some really good form at home. I think it's five wins on the bounce. A little bit of inconsistency away. I suppose you're going to get that from the majority of teams at, at this level, aren't you? A lot will prefer playing on home soil to, to make it a trip like this on a, a Friday night. I think you do, and I think inconsistency seems to be a big thing this season. Obviously, the uh, Leighton Orient, at the top of the division, they're doing fantastic. They've, they've had a fantastic run over these first few months of the campaign, but much of the rest has been inconsistent. The teams that can find that consistency, that's an, a word that uh, Danny Schofield's emphasised quite a lot, finding the consistency in performances. You do that, that'll take you up there and keep you up there as well. James, how nice and how valuable would a win be on Friday night? You know, it's a, a rare opportunity, isn't it? Get to win and, and you've got your Saturday, Sunday to, to enjoy your weekend then and, and make the most of a, a, another Saturday off. But if you could get three points on a bag, it'd, it'd be really good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think we're pretty close to the playoff places and maybe only three points. Um, you know, it, we want to create positive momentum. Um, you know, it, you're right, it has been pretty inconsistent so far. It's been stop, start. Um, so we need to, you know, kind of put a few a few wins together, and there'll be no better place to start on Friday night. Liam, how do you see this one playing out on Friday then? I really do fancy Rovers to to pick up a win in this one. You know, I think in general, if you take the the last few weeks as a whole, the curve has been upward. There's been a few backward steps along the way, but I think that that probably is to be expected, given what Danny Schofield's trying to to implement and and the detail that's involved in that. But in general, upward curve, back Rovers to but get back on it and get a win on Friday night. Probably say the old favourite to one. <laughs> Liam, James, thank you for your company. Thank you at home for watching on as well. We'll see you down here on Friday night, the first home game for a while, as Rovers take on Walsall.